a warm good evening everybody thanks for joining in at c step uh, we have been planning a media workshop of this nature for quite some time now we feel the time is ripe and right for a media workshop on communication uh, according to a recent uh, survey done by linkedin uh, communication emerged as the most preferred soft skill among recruiters moreover we are seeing the impact of climate change all around us uh, if you look at the recent floods in bengaluru uh, the cloud burst in uttarakhand and even scorching summer across half the globe we see that climate change is here to stay and the effects are irreversible as scientists and communicators working in the climate uh, sector or energy and environment sector it is our responsibility to take our research findings to a larger audience in short it is not just enough to do ground breaking research but it is equally if not more important to take the findings to policy makers and the public to act to see actual change on the ground so we have here with us mr gopikrishna warrior the managing editor of monga bay india uh, mr gopi is the secretary of the forum of environmental journalists in india he has worked with the communication departments of international agricultural research organizations and was the media spokesperson for the international crops research institute for the semi arid tropics in his earlier role as the regional environmental manager for panos south asia gopi has worked with the media in bangladesh bhutan india nepal pakistan and sri lanka to enhance journalists understanding on climate change and biodiversity as an environmental journalist gopi has also worked with down to earth and the hindu business line he has worked with two national level environment and development ngos action for food production and the indian national trust for art and cultural heritage a prolific environmental writer gopi was the head of publications at the africa rice center in west africa his articles have been published by leading publications such as forbes india india climate dialogue nature india and frontline he is also a regular blogger on environment his stories and blogs can be read at www.gopiwarrior.in well simply uh, you know as someone who has worked closely with researchers i can vouch for the fact that they are inherently media shy and i hope your session kind of convinces them to open up a bit more and communicate with the media thank you very much for the introduction uh, it's it's so nice to uh, to be here this uh, this afternoon uh, and it's a, it's a, it's a pleasure to uh, talk with all of you uh, and uh, also to uh, use use this opportunity to introduce you to our website monga bay india india.mongabay.com uh, that is just in case you're you're not already a reader uh, you, you may be you may be a reader and subscriber there but if you're not then it's it's also a good opportunity to subscribe on your mobile phone and uh, on the on the um, uh, on email etc uh, so uh, i I'll, i'll start my uh, presentation i'll i'll talk to you about uh, why I mean, at this point of time, when we are going through ra rather uh, strong uh, environmental stresses, why it is very important for uh, research to talk with uh, researchers, to talk with journalists, research institutions, to talk with journalists. Uh, so, uh, I give me a second. Give me a second. I'll just uh, start my presentation and share my screen. Uh, this, this, uh, this. is a picture who's this can somebody tell me tell me who this is so someone from c step has uh, already answered uh, it's yeah. papa rao says it's sachin yeah someone else also has keyed in yeah. mr sachin tendulkar so, uh, is there something odd in this picture we have someone who who has said a famous batter is bowling a famous batsman yes uh, we don't hear about uh, you know uh, um, uh, uh, of sachin tendulkar bowling but uh, uh i mean uh, why is he brought 
uh, in, into into a match uh, as a bowler. Uh, also, Ranka from C step says it is to confuse the batsman. Exactly, exactly. So Sachin is is usually brought in when there's no breakthrough in uh, in 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 wickets, you know, and uh, when there is a, when there is a uh, stagnation and the bowling team, Indian team needs a desperate breakthrough. Uh, uh, Sachin is brought in, and Sachin actually makes a breakthrough, and very often he has made a breakthrough. And this is not something that I am saying. This is wisdom. You know, wisdom is the is the is a global record keeper on on uh, cricket. Uh, wisdom says that he has two hundred and one international wickets to his credit. I mean, which is not 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 something very small. And he's he's the only bowler in ODI history to defend six or less runs in the final over the game more than once. So that means, I mean, not only when there is no wicket, you know, Sachin comes in, bowls, and and there's a wicket falls, and then then the batting side the batting side starts crumbling, or it's the last crucial over when when you know you need to hold the runs and uh, ensure that the game is won. Sachin is ball uh, brought, and Sachin Sachin has more than once. You know, uh, uh, taken the game to victory. Now, now, why does that happen? Because Sachin thinks like a batsman. Uh, Sachin, Sachin is uh, all the other bowlers. You know, there's a different bio, mindset for the bowler and a different mindset for the batsman. So, once you start specializing, you you're in either the batsman's mindset or the bowler's mindset. Sachin thinks like a batsman. So he knows what exactly is going through the batsman's mind at that particular point of time, and and he makes the he bowls. The, the bowls to that, and he breaks the uh, uh, makes a break to the, the batsman, so, and he bowls spin. So uh, you know uh, he's he's known for both. He does both both spins. So so I mean this I have used this entry slide in reverse uh, where I'm I'm uh, you know I'm giving giving you the headline of the slide uh, uh, last. It's saying the whole point of researchers I mean to make impact research researchers to talk to the journalists. Understand the media, spin it like Tendulkar, think like a journalist, you know, and that is what this presentation is going to take you through. I mean, how can you think like a journalist so that you you bold to the to the journalist and and you make maximum impact? Uh, 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 rather, uh, you know, rather rhetorical question, but but we need to answer this right in the beginning. Why is media important? Uh, it multiplies the message best because there's nothing like the media to multiply your message you know i mean uh, you have a you have a message and you know uh, uh, you it, it's taken by a newspaper or a site which has a one which has 1 million views i mean theoretically at least 300000 people would have would have read it i mean there's no way no way in in social media i mean even if you are the even if you are uh, as social media savvy as rajini khan perhaps you may not you may not reach that kind of impact you know it multiplies the message uh, it reaches the public and local at all levels, regional, local, vernacular, uh, local language, national, international level. Uh, it adds your voice. I mean, the, the 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 research that you're doing, it adds your voice to the larger discussion. So, you know, uh, uh, when there's a great discussion going on uh, on a subject that is close to what research you're doing, and and then you 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 uh, you uh, you 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 sort of uh, 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 talk about your research. It adds your voice to the to the larger discussion. Uh, it reaches the government decision makers. I mean, very few. Uh, it, it's to, nowadays you have social media, but still, I mean, the kind of impact, the kind of credibility that the media uh, platform gives you, uh, it reaches the government decision makers with with impact, uh, and it can draw attention to parliamentarians. Uh, 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 legislators, you know, there, there, there have been examples where parliamentarians have, uh, you know, waived uh, the editorial of the Hindu and the editorial of the Times of India in Parliament, and and they have, uh, you know, they have said they, uh, uh, you know, the government must take action on this, etc. So it can draw the attention of parliamentarians and legislators, and even in today's world, it has a greater credibility than social media even in today's world you know where where almost all of us have a social media presence we have an alter ego social media alter ego but the, even with even in today's world it has greater greater uh, credibility than social media and why should we talk about the environment you know that that's that's something very very important why is it important for us to talk about the environment now I, i'll give you half a second to read this uh, this quote 
Uh, this quote is from the Global Risk Report of, of the World Economic Forum. So we are not talking, we are, we are not talking of a report within the environment eco box, you know, eco chamber. I mean, uh, we are not talking of a report from WRI or WWF or UNEP. Uh, you know, we, we are talking, we are, we are not talking of a report from IPCC. We're talking about a body which, which is the mecca of uh, business, you know, mecca of business. That's the World Economic Forum, uh, you know, uh, talking about it, saying that in the next 10 years, the biggest risks to investment, to business uh, will come from environment related, uh, you know, uh, environment related uh, uh, risks. So uh, they have they have gone around risk, uh, identifying the 10, 10 most, uh, most severe risks. And you'll notice uh, five out of the 10 climate action failure is the top risk. Uh, extreme weather is the second uh, Top uh, second top risk biodiversity loss is the third top. So the first three top are are environment related risks, and uh, in in the seventh and eighth position you have uh, human environmental damage and natural resources crisis. You know so so uh, five out of the ten listed greatest risks to economies and businesses are environment. So that's that's exactly the reason why we people like uh, pe people like uh, you know, uh, my, me or my team who are working on environment journalism and people like you working in research uh, on environment and energy, why we, we should be talking more about talking through the media more about environment. And and this is not as if it's the, it, it's uh, it's only this year's uh, uh, report that has, uh, uh, that uh, uh, World Economic Forum talks about. It's, it's an earlier report, you just have a look. This is a two by two matrix in which the likelihood of something happening is as you move to the right it's uh, it's 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 high and the impact is also gets high as you go up in the in the in the in the y axis so uh, so obviously this uh, uh, this this uh, this quadrant uh, has the highest likelihood and high, highest impact now you you go here what, what is it that that is in the highest uh, 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 you know uh, uh, highest there it's, it's climate action failure. Failure is one of the highest risk, risks. You have extreme weather that is that's 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 more more likelihood to happen, uh, most likelihood to happen. And then you look at biodiversity loss here. Biodiversity loss uh, that's that's also in this quadrant. And you just look at the direction in which biodiversity loss has taken from 2018 to 2020. So you you see the trend where it's going. And then then almost all the others are like natural disaster. Uh, human-made environmental disasters, uh, interstate conflicts, water crisis, etc. So, uh, the greatest uh, risk to economies and to businesses are uh, en environmental risks. Uh, now, uh, coming coming to the media, uh, just just to understand how the media has has been uh, uh, has changed over the years, over the last few decades. Like when 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 I was uh, young and preparing for. UPSC, uh, etc. Uh, uh, you know, th those days, uh, you know, it was it was a standard general knowledge question, uh, which is the which is the publication which sells the most, you know, which is which read which is read the most, and the answer was Mal I mean was Malayalam Manorama, which which at that time used to have uh, seven lakh uh, readership of seven lakh people, you know, so uh, and and that and everything else came came beyond that. But but just to understand how the media has been, how the media, how the print media has changed in the in uh, in in uh, between 2001 and 2011, because we have we have census data, we don't have to 2021 census data. So just look at this. This th these are the literacy literacy maps of the country, and look at the states where where maximum change in literacy pattern has happened. These are states in the mostly in the central indian belt so states which which speak languages other than english and of course you have change here tamil nadu has had a change in color you also have change uh, change in himachal pradesh uh, etc but most mostly uh, the 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 change in literacy has happened in the growth between 2001 and 2011 has happened in the middle indian belt and just uh, just just uh, sort of compare this with uh, with how uh, newspaper readership has uh, has changed in the same period, you know, same period between. So, so look at look at 2022 data. Sorry, 2012 data. You know, uh, 2012 data. 
uh, the, the top top leadership top uh, so uh, you know it's dainik jagran dainik bhaskar and hindustan so malayala manorama which was on top has come to the fourth came to the fourth position by 2012 and what has taken taken over are three hindi newspapers dainik bhask dainik jagran dainik bhaskar hindustan and then your malayala manorama which is in malayalam so three hindi one malayalam aman rujala again again in hindi only in the sixth position does times of india come and times of india is the only only english language publication there and then you have daily tanti tamil nadu you saw the color difference in tamil nadu uh, in tamil lokmat which is marathi you also see the color, you also saw the color difference in uh, in in maharashtra uh, and rajasthan patrika uh, which is hindi and matrubhumi now uh, in english you know comes much later uh, the, the 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 what what is first the top is is basically sixth in the national uh, national listing you know so so what had happened in the in the years between 2020 2001 and 2011 are uh, far more number of people have got have become literate in these states where i showed you the literacy chains the central india belt and and uh, maharashtra uh, tamil nadu etc and when you become literate one of the first things that you want to do is show the world that you can read and how do you show the world that you can read you start reading a newspaper because then the world news world knows that you can read and you understand a newspaper so so newspapers uh, language newspapers have grown based on this this uh, you know piggybacking on this on the on the change in uh, uh, change in literacy profile and this the same literacy profile change uh, has uh, from from the newspaper media has has also uh, sort of impacted in the in the past decade that is post 2012 uh, in the past decade especially in the more recent more recent years uh, has has moved in the uh, in 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 the way uh, news and you know information is consumed in the digital world let's go to the digital world uh, Uh, you know the, law, the 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 body which which looks at which does a global analysis of of how how digital world is uh, operates in the world uh, digital world operates is international communications union and it brings out every year it brings out a status report so uh, uh, let's look at the uh, the 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 headline points from the 2021 report It's, it says by the end of 2021, 4.9 billion people. Remember, world is 7.5. I think it's reached eight now, uh, uh, close to eight or eight. Uh, of that 4.9 billion, that is uh, uh, 60, 65 percent people are coming through internet across the world. That is by end of 2021. See, so that is 63 percent. 63 percent of the world population is now online. Of this, and this mark, this, this is very important. Of the 17 percent, that is nearly. 800 million came online since the onset of the pandemic in 2019 so there's been a you know significant growth uh, during the pandemic period uh, in terms of digital news uh, uh, penetration internet penetration increased by more than 20% in asia africa and the pacific these were the areas so including us uh, you know where where digital penetra uh, internet penetration increased during the pandemic years the share of urban there still there still divides there the share of urban users is twice that of rural users uh, and 71% of the people are between 15 and 24 uh, compared to the other age groups where it's only 50 57% so uh, and and the gender divide is 62 gender divide is actually not too much it's it's caught up it's not it's not too much now 62% of men are using the internet compared to 57% of women it used to be much worse few years ago it has it has caught up and mobile uh, cellular subscriptions uh, rose to 110 per 100 in inhabitants so that means there are many many people who have more than one uh, one mobile subscription you know and mobile uh, mobile broadband risk, uh, subscription uh, rose to 83 per 100 that means 83% of people have mobile broadband uh, subscriptions and and the combination of internet and mobile is already showing results of greater internet at faster speed we all are consumers of of internet on on our mobile phone so so i mean this this doesn't need any re, uh, you know uh, reinforcing uh, for us now let's just look at how uh, how it has happened in india now this is uh, this is the this is the world bank uh, uh, world bank 
has taken this ITU data and and uh, made this uh, made this uh, uh, graph. And you see here, this these are the last last few years. Just look at the the way uh, way the graph has grown in the last few years during the COVID pandemic. So India also had an internet internet boom during the pandemic. 2020, the penetration was 43 percent and 47 percent by the end of 2021. So uh, for 43 to 47 percent, we are still uh, below the global average, but but you know we we have made huge progress in the past uh, uh, past couple of years. Now, what does this mean for journalism and the media? So you know uh, uh, have turned so the, the the internet and digital media have turned the business models upside down. So I mean, you most of you would be knowing many of the print print uh, journalism sites are uh, are bleeding. You know they they do not have. Many sites are making losses. You know, print print publications are making losses. Internet and they have turned business models upside down. Closure of traditional media houses and job cuts. You know, many jobs have been lost, and uh, many many newspapers have closed. Uh, cuts in editorial investment and training because because of uh, uh, because of this rearrangement of uh, uh, many many media houses have stopped training training their. Uh, uh, training their journalists and they're turning to social media for sourcing stories. Less money for field reporting and investigative journalism, which is very, very important because that that also means that you get le I mean story less stories from the field, you know, which is uh, which is and 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 because there is so much of pressure uh, to to catch readers' attention, uh, the that tabloid obsession of sensation is 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 uh, has been. Uh, we all know has been coming back in the last uh, uh, few years, and uh, uh, media under pressure to break stories and uh, report fast, which means at times the truth gets uh, compromised in the process. And and the and the sad part in all this is that uh, public interest journalism tends to get undermined in this in this process of transition. So media is also going through a process of transition you you talk to any journalist they'll say the media scene is going through transition and and one of the the the, the saddest part is public interest journalism is trending to get undermined but there there lies i mean in every challenge there's uh, there's an opportunity and there lies the challenge for I mean, there lies the opportunity for all the research research organizations uh, research organizations can use this as an as an entry point to turn these challenges for the media as an opportunity by engaging with journalists to convince good, uh, communicate good evidence-based stories and op-eds, you know, because this is the time there is there is a there is a dearth of uh, I know there's this there's, there's a dearth of good research-based stories and and people are I mean people have gone beyond readers have gone beyond I mean there is there is a certain need for sensationalism but there's also a great need for I mean there's a great felt need among readers to go beyond the sensationalism and understand issues at depth. And that is where, this is the opportunity that research organizations and researchers can use uh, to, to, you know, to talk more about their work. You know? uh, but there are challenges when you talk with the media. Uh, first challenge, media work with catch, catch words. You know? media, media is not necessarily working with, uh, uh, with concepts. In research, you're dealing with concepts. You're asking broad research questions. Uh, you, you're dealing with concepts, but media is not necessarily dealing with concepts. Media is dealing with catchwords. So uh, to talk to the media, you have to uh, go through the catchwords. You have to use the catchwords, you know, biodiversity, climate change, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It needs topicality. I mean, there, there has to be some topicality. I mean, so so if you, if, if uh, I mean, if, if when Bangalore floods are happening, you do you do stories on urban urban planning problems, urban environmental issues, uh, you know, uh, drainage issues in this in cities. You, you extreme weather events. It, it those will be of those will be accepted and used by the media. But then you know when when things are when when it's sunny days and bright days and that time you 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 try to put these stories across, and they may not be picked up. So it needs topicality. Your news your news has to link to the larger picture. Uh, I mean, like, 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 there's a COP happening. There's a uh, the floods happening. There's drought happening. If you can, if you can reach at that time, then then there's a greater acceptability. 
your 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 idea is to catch the reporter's attention. Now we will come to what a, what animal this reporter is, what animal this editor is. You know, so we'll come to that. But your your idea has to catch the reporter's attention. Your idea has to catch the editor's attention. I mean, so uh, only if it's packaged in the way, and that is part of the process of Sachin Tendulkar's pin bowling. You know, you, uh, you 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 do the effective bowling so that it catches the attention of uh, of uh, of the reporter and and the editor. Uh, this is this is a graph which I which I love uh, you know showing uh, in, the, in uh, this 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 from the CS uh, from CSTPR that is Center for Sci Center for Science Technology and Policy Research at University of Colorado uh, in Boulder they they have a media monitoring uh, division cell where where they've been they've been monitoring 126 sources that is uh, uh, across newspapers radio and TV in 58 countries and they have been doing that from uh, 2000 onwards, 2002 to, to current. It's a continuing one. You can go to the site and you'll see the, the, the current uh, current uh, graph you know, as it goes. So they're monitoring these sources and see how, and they're, they're, um, they're, they're monitoring how media covers climate change and global warming, et cetera. And then you will notice uh, these peaks. I mean, this, this highest peak is when the world was really tuned in uh, on, uh, on wanting to know what what climate what what uh, you know what the world can what the world leaders can do to uh, to, uh, uh, to to deal with climate change was in December two thousand nine and that as you know is the Copenhagen Copenhagen COP and then you have a uh, you have a you have a actually much less I mean ironically much less uh, a much smaller peak during uh, uh, in December two thousand fifteen that's the Paris Agreement I think people were very cynical about it. And then you had uh, the Madrid, and and then you see uh, this Glasgow uh, uh, Glasgow COP had uh, had a greater impact. I mean, in fact, in fact, it had a greater impact than the Paris uh, Paris summit. So, so this, so what you notice is uh, these peaks. Most of these peaks have come at the end of the year, and they coincide with uh, with with the COP. So during COPs, you know, there's a lot of uh, talk in the media about the international agreements, international you know, processes, national policies, and there are also many many local stories that make their play. You know, connect to the international. I mean, uh, there's a local story from a small place and says how it connects to the larger discussions on loss and damage uh, at at Glasgow. You know, so uh, these so so if you were to I mean if you were if you have to talk to the media, if your research. I mean, if you talk about your research at any of these points, any of the points where there's where the where these these peaks are, the chances of getting media attention and and through the media, you know, public attention, policy attention, etc., is greater. Uh, let's let's just uh, do a quick uh, this thing about what is this strange animal called the journalist? Uh, I mean, uh, the kind of journalists whom you would meet. I mean, who 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 cover field assignments usually are young and experienced. Because just like in the armed forces, you know, you have your lieutenants and captains actually fighting, and then you know you have brigadiers and generals sitting in front of uh, desks, etc. So likewise, it happens in all professions. In in journalism too, it's it's the young reporters who, uh, and and we all have been young reporters at one point of time to become editors later. But but it's the young reporters are the people whom you mostly will encounter. I mean, people whom you will talk talk with. You know, usually. And they work. They're working at multiple. They are under great time pressure. They're working on multiple stories at the same time. Hard pressed for time and energy. Constantly trying hard. You know that's that's a that's a constant internal battle for a reporter. That the reporter has to catch his chief of bureau or his editor's attention and say, "I have this story. I want to I want to do this story." The it has to catch the editor's attention or the, or the chief of bureau's attention, and that person has to say, "Yes, go ahead and do the story." And that's where. That's when he can do the story. So constantly trying hard to sell his or her story with the gatekeepers works long hours, at least six days of a week. I mean, at least six days of a week and works long hours and uh, and juggles with his her personal life. So I mean, uh, professional and personal life. So so I mean, he's he's a he's is that kind of a uh, animal and not always well paid. I mean, a, a whole lot of. Uh, publications, the the field reporters are not not necessarily very well paid. So you know uh, they are there because of the agency. So you have to you have to sort of push for the agency. You have to uh, I mean you have to identify that he's he he or she is very desperate for good news and then supply supply the person good news. 
and then then this the, the other strange a stranger animal called the editor you know this this is uh, kunda dikshit one of the most well respected uh, editors in south asia uh, he's the editor of nepali times one of the most uh, well known environment journalists in south asia so i just put his picture for representational purposes only uh, and and i'm i'm in no way uh, you know being disrespectful to kunda kunda is my guru mm -hmm. so um, the, the editor has to balance multiple interests in the media product i mean that's that's i mean that's that's uh, that's that's the editor's job you know has to ensure that this product sells i mean like i i could get good stories and i could publish good stories but if people don't read mongo pe india then uh, i mean there's no there's no uh, there's no reason why i should be existing you know so so i have to ensure that not only are the stories interesting but these are the stories which readers are uh, are uh, are interested to uh, read you know has to so product sells reports to the owners of the media house and so multiple pressures that as reader you're not aware but you know uh, or, i mean answerable to the owners i mean if it's if it's a private company and or if it's a, a publicly owned company then you know to the shareholders etc Uh, you know uh, at mongo bay india we have different pressures but then you know so that that's the that that these are the kind of pressures that that a, a editor has to deal with has to pro, has to pro, uh, prioritize news so you know has to prioritize if, if you are talking to a editor of a general newspaper then uh, uh, environment and energy may not be his priority so so how do you how do you get his his eyes and ears onto the on the research that you have works long long hours never really switches off you know i mean so that 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 is the crux i mean you you never switch off so that that makes your that makes you mentally tired so to get your get get the person's attention you need to make that uh, uh, i mean may have only short attention span for your idea so you have to get the get 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 that person's attention at that particular point of time now what do the journalists want i mean that that's something that uh uh what do the journalists want from you uh, a good story a good story i mean that that's what a journalist i mean that's what a good journalist should this 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 photo is from a uh, media workshop i organized in uh, in in ikrisat when i was there uh, as a media 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 officer and uh, you could see that, that the interest where this this is a scientist Uh, who is talking about his research by bio agri biotechnology research and just look at the involvement that the journalists have so what do the what a what does a good journalist want a good story i mean wants a good story i mean that's it uh, and and if if a good if a journalist wants something other i mean if if the journalist has is reaching out to you uh, for something other than news you know i mean like uh, rent seeking or you know something something else then you should you should stand your ground and say i am interested in only giving you uh, you you uh, you news i am not going to engage with you on anything else i mean that is the terms of engagement is up to up to the researchers to uh, uh, to to decide and they need access and time of the experts who can explain concepts and without jargon and clarity i mean that's something which which journalists want because journalists understanding of some of the some of the areas of research that you do is not very very much i mean unless the journalist is specialized journalist but even if a journalist is specialized he is not an expert he or she is not an expert uh, that's where he's he or she is coming uh, to talk talk with uh, talk with uh, uh, you know experts and and you need to be able to explain your work and the concepts clearly without uh, without jar without jargon and with clarity now let's just speak quickly go through what are the tools we could use to deal with journalists so let's let's deal with the tools press release i mean this is something that uh, most organizations do i mean there is, i mean like there would be uh, people in the communication department who create press releases for the organization so press release or press statement which is a which is a written statement that can be reached to journalists either by email or during a press meeting so press uh, press press release or press statement is one of the tools press meeting or a press briefing so press meeting uh, uh, with journalists you know meeting formal or informal where where researchers can talk with uh, talk about the relate rate recent development or the director of the institute can talk about the recent development etc opens and this is where researchers themselves can participate in the media process uh, by writing opens by ensuring that your voice and arguments are heard in the media and from the media public space and policy space 
media workshop. These are these are online or offline events. I mean, uh, it used to be only offline, but now uh, after COVID, many of these are organized online. So online events where uh, or hybrid events where the, there's an opportunity for journalists to interact with, with uh, you know, more time with multiple experts. A media tour is like if you're doing a, if you're doing a, uh, uh, doing some kind of research which uh, for which you can bring journalists and talk to them in your in your either in your field station or uh, or in your offices you know where you can show them systems etc you know that has an entirely different impact because seeing is believing and you will you will have a much greater impact you will build relationships which which go longer you know so so if there are some people from atri in this uh, in, in today then you'll realize the kind of uh, uh, stories that came when Fiji and you know, Forum for Environment Journalists in India and uh, ATRI had a series of media visits to ATRI, uh, you know, a few years ago. So uh, press release or press statement, I mean, just, just quickly, uh, I want to, because people take this for granted and, and you know, you make, make mistakes because press release has to hold, hold journalists' attention. Uh, should not be more than, I mean, one, one and a half pages is actually a good, good, uh, this thing should not be more than two pages, certainly, and uh, should answer the five W's and one H, I mean, that, that, that is journalism 101, but a press release has to, has to answer that, that is who, where, what, when, why, and how in the intro, so that means most of those five W's and one H should be answered in the first few paragraphs, most important information should be in the earliest paragraph, so that the reporter need not go to the end to find out why this press release was uh, issued in the first place. It should be it should be in the in the, the earliest uh, paragraphs, and it should remove remove con confusion. You know, should uh, rather than creating any more confusion. And at the bottom, there should be a name of a contact person, so a phone number, email address, etc., so that you know if the journalist wants to follow up further. It can talk to, I mean, this can either be a communication profession, professional or it can be a, uh, a scientist name, you know, and one, at least one or two officials have to be quoted because then journalists can, can also use those quotes in the story. Uh, press meeting or press conference facilitates face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, it, it's good to have a, have, have a focus or press meeting, otherwise it will just go everywhere. So, and for that, the press release would be a good good document to prepare and and give it to journalists before the before the press meet so that i mean as they come for the press meet so they know what today's press meeting is on all about you know so so that that becomes the boundaries of the press meeting otherwise you know uh, journalists can ask questions that are totally irrelevant to that day's meeting and then uh, uh, the speakers will be at 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 a loss to answer those questions you know so so that's very very important and Unless there is something very, very urgent to communicate, do not call a press meeting when the parliament or assembly is in session or elections are happening or there's a lot of you know political debate going on because you will not get attention. You talk about uh, uh, you know hydrogen storage at, at the time of elections, you're not going to you're not going to get any attention. Uh, you know, and the best time organize this more by more by practice uh, is around. Uh, 11, 11 a.m. to lunch and around in the afternoon, 3 to 4.30. And, and please ensure that there are not more than three people talking at a press meeting. I mean, it, you press, it's a press meeting, it's not a symposium. So, you know, don't get seven people to talk to, talk to journalists. It's not going to, it's not going to go anywhere. And, and media tour, I mean, taking journalists to uh, field trips to see them understand, uh, you know, how, how some of these, some of the systems work and and once you see that, then it's sort of really builds a uh, builds 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 a relationship which which goes uh, a long way. Uh, media workshop is is, is 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 as I said, you know, uh, is a, it's a slightly longer term. Uh, I mean, two days or three days, you know, long format interaction between experts and journalists, and and can, you can bring multiple experts to talk interact with journalists, and also you can have uh, sessions uh, with with editors or you know with uh, uh, with senior journalists who can then uh, you know paraphrase these discussions to say what kind of stories can so it become it can cut both ways i mean one is understanding what what has been said by the scientists or experts and two 
how can these be uh, turned into good story ideas you know so it becomes a good uh, uh, good interaction social in and it's just interact just sentence uh, social interactions and long term returns i uh, hope uh, long term returns that build into long term relationship and uh, people then start talking with the scientists like this the gentleman here is called kiran sharma and this is from a media workshop i had organized in ikrisat and kiran sharma later went on to become the deputy director general of ikrisat and and um, yeah, and kiran i think even now people talk uh, journalists talk to him when it comes to agri bio agro bio technology you know so so you you, you sort of uh, build long term relationship and and the other tool that you can use yourself is the oped oped that that is used now oped is uh, you know stands for the uh, the original i mean the word oped now now it's very used uh, used uh, liberally but oped the editorial page so uh, if if you if you see this in the newspaper you know all i mean this is the editorial this the, these two are the editorials and everything else that come come in these two pages inside pages are opeds so all these are opeds this is an oped this is an oped at the bottom are the letters to the editor this is an oped this is an oped this is more mostly a uh, it's something like a reporter's diary i mean reporter writes about his experience and this is a data based uh, a data based opinion story which the hindu team does and here you have this uh, you know from the archives 50 years or 100 years before uh, so so this this is an oped space so that that is basically the opinion page so the these two pages publish opinion pieces rather than news reports and as in the other pages so that's that's why it's important because uh, newspapers have to tag it as opinion so that it's not not news report and uh, now it's it's just sort of come to signify any any opinion piece uh, uh, opposed to a news report for us in mongabay india we use the word commentary and when we when we have uh, when we have a commentary we usually put within square brackets you may have seen it we say commentary and then then the then the then the title comes so that people are aware that it's an opinion piece it's not a it's not a news story that we are talking about and uh, why is an oped in, 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 important i mean why why should scientists be writing opeds for publications it gives space for opinion in a news dominated media it gives space for a cogent well structured argument it gives uh, space for a cogent well structured argument or or against an environment development or or a particular policy or a new new finding or a new uh, you know whatever uh, strengthening the public per perception of an environment issue so so it can it can strengthen the public perception on why there should be heat action plans urban heat action plans etc and it can get the attention of policy makers uh, um, and it gives an opportunity for a first person led narrative so you can even start an oped by saying i you know went it's to such an place and i saw this and then develop from that into uh, in, into a proper well structured argument and even in this social media dominated world a good oped has an impact uh, more impact i mean uh, i wouldn't get to more or less but certainly has great impact when compared to tweets or facebook posts etc because you're also adding the weight of the platform your your own weight and your own gravitas plus the i mean there's an oped in the hindu there's an oped in mongabay india so you're adding the weight of gravitas of the hindu or, or mongabay india to to your own your own weight now you have a right to your opinion but you know that's 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 an oped but there's an opinion piece and you can hold your gray, uh, ground and state state your argument that is that is perfectly fine you can debate somebody else's view point we have done that in uh, in mongabay india we have done that we have had point counterpoint kind of uh, opeds so you can debate somebody else's viewpoint but do remember i mean these are the ground rules uh, you cannot be disrespectful you cannot be disrespectful to the to the other person you cannot use language that is not acceptable that's that that certainly no no and also remember that it's not the last word somebody else can counter you and run your argument down also tomorrow you know so so be be aware that 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 can happen so the overriding aim and this something that at least i mean that's that's something that most publications the 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 editors of publications do and and i, I keep repeating in mongabay india too i mean the, the 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 overriding aim is to shed more light rather than heat on an issue make clarify issues rather than adding your voice to the heat you know saying that uh, this this should not happen that should not happen etc but but you know 
give more reasons on why you are saying it. What is the reason why you are saying, saying this? And, and publications also, I mean, see, there is, we do say at the bottom and every, every publication will say, this is the views of the author and not of the publication. But despite that, there is there are liabilities. So, so I mean, if you're going to write something which is very volatile and you know uh, uh, that, that that uses strong language or has strong views and opinions, you know, then the chances are your your op-ed is not likely to be published by the uh, by any publication. Now, how how do you structure an op-ed? I mean, just just is is essentially it's like when you get into an aircraft. Uh, the, the pilot tells pilot tells you as you're in, you know, we're going to take a, a flight is going to take, we'll be flying at 38,000 feet. It will be, you know, uh, we, and, and then, and then later at a later stage, uh, he, he says, we are starting a descent and the temperature at Chennai is X uh, degrees, you know, all that. So, so this, it's like that. So you have, you have the, you have the ascent and you have the cruise, cruise where the, where, where, where you, where you have the most amount of, uh, uh, arguments for the op-ed and the dissent. So the ascent is where you state the peg, where you say, why are you writing this op-ed and what is the context of this op-ed? And the cruise is where you, where you elaborate the complexities. I mean, uh, the complexities of your, your argument, articulate the linkages, linkages of, of your environmental, uh, you know, uh, whatever your argument is, how that links to policy, how that's linked to politics, how that links to economics, you know, and articulate the linkages, you argue your case, and, and the main points of this, the entire op-ed has to be covered in this, uh, in, in the, the cruise phase. And then comes the descent phase where, where you're essentially tying your ends together, tying all the ends together, concluding your arguments, and link back to the start of your op-ed. So, so these are the three main stage, stage, stages of an op-ed. And uh, use simple language that communicates with these. Uh, these are some of the style guides. Uh, if your interest is to impress the editor with bombast, it does not work. You know, somebody who, who sent an op-ed uh, for consideration to us wrote words like anthropogenic avarices. Uh, I mean, needless to say that that op-ed did not get uh, published. So, you know, don't use big, big words. Use the ideas to shed more light. So you know, use simpler language, which, which, uh, which sort of uh, uh, you know, which which people can uh, understand. Use active voice, which is which is which is not just for op-eds, but for everything. You know, uh, John wrote this op-ed rather than this op-ed was written by John. You know, the subject being that, and active voice is always more active and direct. So please use active voice rather than passive voice. Keep your paragraph small, one idea to one, uh, one idea, one paragraph. You know, uh, as researchers, you are used to writing lengthy paragraphs. When you're writing for a, for the media, please keep your paragraph small. You know, small, three, four lines, one paragraph, one idea covered. Move on, next paragraph. You know, so and if there are a lot of sub ideas, break them into smaller separate paragraphs. Keep your sentences simple and straight. If a sentence seems convoluted, break it into smaller sentences. And a short sentence amongst long sentences create uh, impact. So I just I just picked this example from from a recent piece. It's not it's not an op-ed but a book review. But the logic is the same, which I wrote uh, wrote a book review on on uh, Amitabh Ghosh's uh, uh, latest book, The Living Mountain. So so if you if you, if you take uh, half a minute to read this, I mean you would see that all the all the all the all the lines. I mean most of the lines are fairly. Uh, complex but there is one line which is which is very short so and that that is for me the crux of this that entire book review is this line short in its narrative this is the first line of the second paragraph short in its narrative the book is long in its read so so what i'm trying to say is this book is only 35 pages but then it's not the 35 pages that is limiting i mean this 35 pages it it sort of really opens the world to a whole lot of environmental discussion so the point being that you know if you, if you have i mean if if you are arguing something and then you have a set of rather uh, long statement long sentences just get one sentence that is short and that that and pack that with the with the punchline and that that will have impact it's 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 a, just a style guideline and i'm just sharing a couple of uh, opits as examples uh, one one was this one on onam that i had done uh, I think uh, the 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 link would would come on the uh, come on the chat. Uh, this this one is uh, uh, about Onam. I did uh, before 2020. I mean, I just took the the idea of Onam 
uh, Kerala festival and then linked it to environment, climate change, monsoons. Uh, COVID-19 was going on, economics, I looked at it, economics because Onam, like how Diwali is uh, for other parts of India, Onam for Kerala is what kickstarts the annual economic cycle, you know, and how, uh, how, how, it, how it links to economics and history, uh, the, the culture, you know, the, the story of um, Ma, Ma, Mahabali and all that culture and uh, linking back to the Mahabali lore, etc. So, so, I mean, taken a, uh, and when, when you do a, uh, when you do an op-ed which like that, you it's not just environment, so it sort of strengthens your uh, uh, environmental arguments. This is another op-ed which I just wanted to give an example of uh, uh, by by uh, Professor Shikan Gupta. He's an eco he's a famous economist, and uh, he's he wrote one on uh, on on um, uh, in in economic times, and he starts with the so so basically start with an example that everybody understands and then you can unravel complexity. So he starts with this thing about PK, PK that Amir Khan character uh, and, the, and how, how is he, he's, he wants to try to reach God. He's unable to reach God because he keeps getting wrong numbers. And, and through that, he uh, Shrikant argues on how, you know, GDP numbers do not tell the story of natural capital and natural capital loss and, and why GDP numbers should not be the only uh, indicator to look at economic health. I mean, if you have, uh, if I mean, I, I I think the link would be shared. If you uh, if 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 you have a chance, read read this piece. Now coming back to a master blaster, and and this is how uh, you know I I want to sort of uh, uh, round this up. Uh, me building bridges with media is a continuous process. It's not something that that you can do in one shot. It's it's not like it's not like paracetamol. I mean, it's more like, you know, Ayurvedic medicine. You just have to do it, keep doing it, and uh, uh, and 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 you get results. Okay. So the, the 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 crux is you have to communicate the right message to the right people through the right medium at the appropriate time. So uh, what message should be communicated to? What kind of journalist? I mean, you can even identify journalists, uh, build relationship with a particular journalist, and and or or an editor or whatever, and. And you, you, you communicate the right message to the right people through the right medium. I mean, you, you, you may want to, uh, I mean, sometimes may, uh, you know, may want to reach the uh, television medium, sometimes may the print, maybe digital, you know. So right medium, whichever medium you want to use, reach All India Radio, I mean, it has its own impact, you know. So through the right medium at the appropriate time. I mean, so the timing is very important in when you're dealing with media. Timing is extremely important when you, when you reach your news. Uh, there are four principles of this. Understand what the media needs. Coming back to a master blaster and his bowling skills, and how he can uh, how he can make a big break breakthrough because uh, uh, because you know he thinks like a batsman. Understand, uh, think like a batsman. Understand what the media needs. Uh, whole is more than some of the parts. That means the the work that that you're trying to do is. I mean, you may be doing it in small bits. Uh, your communication with journalists will be could be in small bits, but the larger impact is more than the sum of all these bits. So, so do these bits properly, and that will build into a larger uh, relationship and a larger, uh, you know, um, uh, relationship which can be used at any point of time, which can be, you know, uh, so traffic flows on bridges unexpectedly. So, you have to build those bridges. Those bridges have to exist before the tra before traffic flows. You can't. I mean, as traffic comes, you can't build a bridge. You don't. You won't have time. So build the bridges with journalists, uh, you know, or media houses before before traffic starts flowing. I mean, do keep talking about your research, etc. Even if you don't have, uh, you haven't reached that stage where you can talk about your research officially. You can say, "I am working on this." You know, continuing process. I'll get back to you when I have I have more on this subject. You know, so build the traffic flows on bridges unexpectedly. So build those bridges and keep it. Uh, so that you can you can use it, and uh, engaging with media is not a pro. It's it's more of a process than a product. So if you do the process right, I mean, if you if you do it with good intentions, with with integrity, with you know, uh, with no other uh, malicious intent, you know, uh, or it's not for personal. I mean, only for personal aggrandizement. You know, and you're doing it for a larger purpose. Then you do the process right. When the product will take care of itself, you know you don't you don't you don't need to be worried about it. The product will take care of itself. So let's 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 do this together. 
see in the coming years uh, we we are in we are in the very tra transition period because you know we have two two things happening one is that the the arabian sea has been warming beyond uh, beyond the, uh, the the cyclogenesis uh, 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 temperatures and there are enough scientific um, um, papers on this and because of that we are going to see far more number of extreme weather events we are going to see far more uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the your your monsoons are not going to be as reliable as what they used to be so we are going to have whole lot of things happening i mean more uh, more intense and more extreme weather events so that's one side of the thing but on the other side there's also there is a transition happening there's a transition and that that transition process is underway of of india trying to move from fossil fuel economy to a renewable en energy economy how much can it move and how soon can it move i mean these these are things you can discuss but you have to accept that there is a transition so these are the two two broad parameters that is happening and and it's because of these the research has to be uh, i mean research has to engage with multiple stakeholders if you don't do it now then you won't get an opportunity later so the research has to involve with multiple stakeholders including journalists and and talk about your work on biodiversity conservation climate change mitigation adaptation etc you know so so this is the time that you you know uh, researchers should be talking and engaging with the nation through the media and uh, it is it is it is it's a most important time to be engaging with the media and writing impactful op-eds or communicate ideas talk about a research plan and through the media you talk with uh, policy make public and policy makers and let us remember that to find possibilities and solution there's a need to engage with all i mean we have to i mean you can't we, and those days are over when we can when you know people could just sit in an ivory tower and not engage with other other actors researchers will need to be nimble and responsive nimble i mean uh, being nimble is very important you know uh, not not say i mean not stuck in base uh, response re communicate with media and communicate uh, through the uh, various tools you know even opens etc thank you very much thanks thanks to all of you for uh, for listening to me uh, i will stop sharing and i am open to questions Yeah, so Gopi, we have quite a few questions. So someone is asking, are op-eds accepted by early stage researchers? Or does one have to be an expert in the research field? Uh, op-eds are, ex uh, I mean, uh, let, let me answer that question as an editor. Uh, this is a question which I'm usually asked. And, and the answer is, uh, it, it depends on the, on what you're trying to say, rather than your age. We are not bothered about your age we are not bothered about your gender uh, we we are we are more bothered about what you are trying to say but what we we do connect and that's why when if you were to pitch a pitch an op ed to mongabe india uh, we would we would i mean we have a form jot form which we send across and there we we ask you to attach a cv because that's that's something that we would like to connect your uh, understand your uh local standard to be writing that op ed or op ed you know i mean whether you are i mean if you're if you're if you're do, doing research on let's say snakes and then you want to write an uh, op ed about astrophysics then i mean you're not you you're not competent to do that you no know? so 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 then we do look at whether you're competent to do that but once we are aware that you're competent and what you're saying is something new and it 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 it, it takes the argument the knowledge frontiers uh, uh, extends the knowledge frontiers then we then age is not a factor at all shrilika okay yeah so anjali singh wants to know uh, how can we use media to increase visibility of our research work as research works are narrow or topical uh, while media articles could be generalized need to be generalized for wider audience yeah that that is that is usually the usually the bottleneck i mean and that is uh, and that's the bottleneck where where you will have to think like you will have to be like sachin tendulkar and try to think like a journalist i mean and that is that is how i mean that depends on how you are following the media and seeing uh, how media has been covering uh, let's say you are working on energy pricing for instance and uh, uh, and and uh, 
and and connect to a discussion that is going on in energy pricing. So so if if, if there is there is no shortage of energy. I mean, if the Ukraine war is not happening, and that's there's no shortage of energy, and energy pricing is like 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 say crude is at forty uh, forty dollars a barrel, and there's there's I mean unthinkable. But India in India you you're getting petrol and diesel at forty or fifty rupees a liter, and at that time you talk about energy pricing, uh, you know you are not likely to get get an audience uh, or you're not likely to get space but but so that's where your ability to look at look at how how the national discussions are going how media discussions are going and at that time i mean if you think that your your idea i mean your idea i mean obviously research is always done in in narrower uh, framework and research cannot be done in broad framework unless you're a macroeconomist or you know doing that kind of research so so your research will be a narrow framework and the and the and the newspaper media narrative will be a broad framework but at that particular point of time you can take your narrow research um, and talk about it and and uh, ride get space on the larger discussion and and be heard Shridika. yeah yeah so we have a important question Many researchers are worried about engaging with journalists due to, uh, you know, chances of some kind of a misunderstanding, yeah. oversimplification and sensational, sensationalization. So how do we address this concern and reach a middle ground? Yeah. Okay. So first, first and foremost is, is uh, you don't want to be wrongly quoted, isn't it? I mean, that's your first concern. You don't want to be quoted out of context, you don't want to be uh, uh, quoted, uh, uh, quoted wrong. And your, 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 quote, your quote is not given a disproportionate weightage. I mean, you may make a statement about something, let's say wetlands in Bangalore, and suddenly it should not be linked to the national government is not doing anything about wetlands. I mean, because that's not a statement that you've made and that, that statement will embarrass you, embarrass, embarrass the organization, and you know all kinds of things. So, so, so uh, you don't want to be quoted out of context. So, one good way of doing it is uh, share as much as possible. I mean, through I mean, if you have an organization uh, communications person, then uh, uh, through a press release, or or even if you are sort of uh, talking with journalists, share it through email as much as possible. I mean, talk, but also share share it with through email and. Uh, and you know, if if you have already done a study or a paper, share that so that so that the journalist uh, gets gets that, uh, and and that is that is used. And you can you have a right to ask the journalist, can you when you're quoting me, can you can you read back my quote to me? I mean that can you play back? So if you ask the journalist that, please show me the story. No, journalist will tell you take a walk. Okay, so so don't. <laughs> Don't do that. I mean, because how a particular research can be, uh, I mean, has uh, is is spoken to to the media is the journalist prerogative. So you have no control over that. So you 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 cannot ask the journalist to say uh, uh, play back the story to me, and only when I approve, uh, uh, you know, you can publish. The journalist will say thanks, uh, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for knowing you, but you know, uh, we don't want your we don't want to quote you. But the point, the point is, if you don't want, I mean, you don't want your quote to be out of context, then you have a right to say, can you, when you're quoting me, can you, uh, can you read back? And most good journalists will read that back to you. So you can, you have a, uh, you then you know, I mean, if there's if there's a slight tweak you need to make, it doesn't sound the way you have meant it, then you can make those, uh, they, those, uh, you know, uh, tweets, etc. Oversimplification. See, oversimplification. Now, the the, the point of uh, simplification is, I mean, the way you think, the de kind of details you you think as a researcher, things have to uh, go. I mean, you have to go to that length to the, uh, you know detail. It's not the same. That's not the journalist's uh, viewpoint. Journalists may not want things that are too much of depth, you know, because at that kind of depth, the journalist loses a journalistic story. You will lose all communication impact you know so so journalists will simplify to a certain extent now the point is what you what you need to 
talk with journalism. That's where you engage with journalists and you build the relationship with journalists as you're talking is that you, you do not, I mean, the journalist does not dummify what you're saying, but journalists will have to certainly simplify. So that, that, that process you have to accept. I mean, and certain amount of detail is not necessarily needed for a journalist. So, I mean, if you go into too much of detail, then the journalist is likely to lose uh, lose track of the story. So, so that that is uh, that's oversimplification is uh, is something that that you have to be careful. Sensationalization, I suppose, you have to do a bit of your uh, your uh, due diligence before you talk to a journalist. I mean, if if a particular journalist is uh, is, is 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 prone to sensationalize, or certain programs are prone to sensationalize then you should not be talking there. I mean, so, I mean, although you will be tempted to talk, uh, if you're invited to talk at one of these nine o'clock shows, and I don't want to name them, which are mostly in shouting matches on television, but uh, 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 you're invited by very well, well-known, very well-known hosts, and, and you're going to talk about serious research, that's not the place you should be. Because your well-known host is, going to murder what what you what what you are saying and the well known host is going to turn uh, your discussion into what he or she wants wants to turn, what 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 his or her agenda is that day so you have to stay away from those kind of uh, so you have you have to do your due diligence and go go to those uh, i mean if people approach you uh, try and talk to those kind of journalists rather than, and if you're reaching out, try to those kind of journalists and those kind of platforms, which do not sensationalize, which focus on giving, adding more uh, light rather than heat on a subject. Shrika? Yeah, so we have a couple of questions from Preston Olakato. He, mm -hmm. he says one complaint we hear when talking about training workshops and so on is that journalists are hard pressed for time. In such yeah. a case, how can we enable deeper engagement to understand an issue? Yeah, I mean, the, the deeper in engagement is essentially try and identify those journalists who have, who have an interest on the subject, you know, and then uh, people who have had a track record of, of uh, you know, of Talk, uh, of writing on a particular issue or reporting on a particular issue. So there is a personal and a organizational buy buy in for what you're going to say. So so don't try to uh, you know uh, catch hold of somebody who who does general reporting, but catch hold of somebody who writes deeper stories on uh, on 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 your subject, environment, energy, etc. So that that that's the first step, and then to try and. Uh, I mean, if you have a training workshop, I mean, one answer is usually, I mean, which is a practical answer. I have used it in my in my role as a media officer, is that uh, uh, do organize organize your uh, meetings outside uh, city limits. You know, because if you're if you're in the city limits, then the then the then the then the journalist is you know at the beck and call of the journalist or I mean at, of the editor or chief of bureau. And the person may just call and say, "Oh, this is happening. Why don't you go and cover this?" You know, and then then you all that you have done is goes wasted. So try and organize it outside, so it's not easy for the uh, journalist to return. So it's, I mean, it's it's in a way holding journalists as captives. I mean, if political parties take them, take them, take you know, legislators across states, why can't uh, media organizations you know organize? Uh, uh, meetings slightly away from so that people do not get pulled out and you know uh, redeployed to something else so uh, and and if you if you're, get, if you're getting the right kind of people don't don't aim for large numbers even if you get 15 20 people who are who are very focused and you have the resources fly them in or you know bring them across cities to where you are and uh, then you'll get good good results. And you remember, you're not you're, your aim is not to get immediately too many. I mean, lots of stories. I mean, your aim is to build build relationship with these journalists because these are young young journalists who have shown a lot of interest and uh, with whom you're investing in a relationship. So this this journalist grows and later becomes becomes an editor of an organization, and 
and you know so you're investing in a relationship the, and that your relationship grows you know you, you become a personal friend of this person you will change jobs the journalist will change jobs but then your relationship does not change you know if you have invested in that relationship so so i mean think of it in that way and don't don't think of it in like i i need to get 15 stories out of this training workshop it may not happen you may get five but that does not matter that does not matter you have invested in a relationship and that relationship is going to go a long way this this whenever the person talks about writes about environment or, or energy he will go back to the backgrounding he or she has got from the time you had your training she had he had the training workshop i'm sorry i'm using he as uh, i i can use she if you want but then you know that's that's just just i mean uh, rather than complicate uh, uh, you know uh, the, the gender yeah it means both huh? please yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, so he has another question. There are many opportunities for freelance reporting and writing. If a researcher wanted to report versus write an open piece, would this be possible? And what are editors looking for in a story? How do you cover a development versus comment slash write an open? Yeah, okay. Uh, now, uh... if somebody, I mean, let's just, just for example, I mean, let's let's say somebody from, uh, an expert or a, or a young young researcher from C step where to approach me and say that I want to do a story. Um, uh, I mean, report like a journalist. You know, go out and report like a journalist. I would say no. I would say no because uh, to start with, there is there is a there will be there is a conflict conflict of interest. So uh, I, I I mean, if I want to get a, a, a news report or a feature report on a development, I would rather use either one of my team members or I would use a freelance journalist, you know, rather than a freelance researcher uh, or a researcher associated somewhere. So a researcher is not by, because it does require a certain training and certain instincts. So a researcher is not by training, uh, trained to train to, you know, do a news report or a, or a feature report. But a researcher can certainly do an op-ed. So there no, there's no conflict of interest. And where they where we are also writing, so and so is a researcher with this organization, the views are personal. So there's no there's no problem. But uh, we, we we do not encourage uh, I mean researchers to to don the role of of, of a reporter and do a story uh, which is like a news report or a or a feature story. Shrika? Yeah, so uh, Gopi, we have somebody called Namrata Lunia. She's the communications manager at uh, some organization and she has a few questions. So the first one is, do you have a database of journalists interested in environmental conservation related topics? If yes, could you share that with Okay, there is there's an organization called uh... Uh, Peji, which I'm the which I'm the secretary, the Forum for Environment Journalists in India. It it does run a uh, uh, does run an email network uh, of uh, of journalists reporting on on environment. So what they do not do is usually uh, I mean uh, because the the discussions in the email network is is to do with the profession. So so these are professional. But but if somebody wants to put something out and reach out to a whole series of journalists, then you can, uh, 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 you know, you can do it through the India EJ network, you know, so, so then you reach out to an entire network of environment journalists across the country. So that's, that's one. There have been many attempts to uh, build databases of environment journalists, but all that gets dated over a period of time. The press, Press Institute of India, I mean, had brought two handbooks on a directory of environment journalists uh, when, you know, very famous uh, journalist Usha Rai was the director of Press Institute. But all those have got dated because people have moved on. Some people have left journalism. Some have died. Some have retired, you know. So, so, uh, so that any static database, that usually is the issue. But uh, be aware, almost every, I mean, you have publications like Mongo Bay India or Sanctuary or Down to Earth where, where, you know, our focus is mostly on environment, I mean, or own. so so you will, uh, we have, we are specialized in that sense, but almost every publication you today has, has one reporter who would be 
almost wholly or at least partly covering environment. So all you need to do is track that track that journalist, find out find out who's who's covering for scroll, and that's not difficult to do because you you re, you follow scroll for a few days, you'll see Vaishnavi Rathore's story. You know Vaishnavi Rathore is covering environment. You know. Uh, you follow the wire, you'll see Adira Perinjeri's story, you'll see no Adira Perinjeri is covering environment. So so and then and then talk talk with them. I mean if you want to put reach out something to to uh, you know to to uh, uh, for every for a lot of environment journalists to um, uh, to take note of then you can send it to Fiji. Uh, the Fiji website is there fiji.org and uh, you can send it there and then from there it can, it can go to the uh, email uh, email uh, group. Okay. So her second question is, do journalists maintain editorial calendars based on which we can send them leads for stories? If not, how do we maintain communication with them to know what are the insights they are looking for? I, I think that's that's where you have to do your, uh, your due diligence of, uh, I mean, it's very difficult for you to reach me to ask what am I thinking because I may not have the time to uh, time to answer answer you you know individually I mean that that that's not possible but but if you follow Mongabay India or you for that matter I mean I'm just taking Mongabay India as an example if you follow other publications uh, on what are the stories on environment that are coming uh, you know you know those stories uh, those are the those are what is currently of interest you know when cheetah came, everybody was interested on cheetah. And then, you know, if, if at that time you could talk about grassland research, fabulous, fabulous. You know, so so that that bit of work you would have to do yourself. You know, so so you'll have to keep keep monitoring the publications to see what what are the research that's being discussed at that at that particular point of time, and and then make your make your pitch. I mean, we do keep a keep track. I mean, not not really very very seriously but we do keep track of days and things like that you know biodiversity day uh environment day wetlands day you know all that but the the point is to reach those things you should not be sending me on day uh, two days before wetlands day and say you know uh my ceo has written this beautiful op-ed can you carry it no i mean our production cycles are much longer so if you're going to if, if you want to want something to be carried on biodiversity day, then you have to reach me two or two to three weeks in advance and say, this is what we want to write and then then go through that process. So if you suddenly come and think that uh, we will make space for your, your piece, that's not going to happen. So we do keep track of calendar days, but uh, to make a pitch for that, you'll have to come at least two weeks in advance. Uh, to us, you know, saying that we would like to make, we would like a commentary to be published on World Environment Day. This is the commentary. And then we take a decision whether we should, whether that's an area that we have already published and we don't want to do this commentary or not, that 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 uh, decision we take. So we have Arpan Golecha from WRI asking, in communicating technical insights, there's never really an appropriate time. How can these be communicated simply in a manner that is relevant? Coming from yeah. a perspective, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it is, it is uh, I mean, finding the appropriate time is important. I mean, you will have to, because it's, it's standard 101 journalism is, uh, uh, I mean, when you join a journalism school, they teach you, you need a peg to hang your coat. You know, it's like, basically, I mean, you can't, you want to take your coat off. You need to have. You want to hang it on the uh, on the wall. Uh, you can't. I mean, if you just keep it on the wall, it will fall. So you need a peg to hang your coat. I mean, this is this is a standard one o one journalism. Uh, you know, a phrase that. So so you need something to to catch, give topicality. So you you will have to uh, uh, work on something. I mean, if, if, even if you can work linkages to something. You know, even if the linkage is not direct, but you can work a linkage which 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 you know connects, and you can argue your case saying that oh, is a World Environment Day is coming. I am working on this, and you know this this can connect to that, or you know uh, people can talk about cheetah, a big cat research, and connect. Then 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 the connection is made, and then 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 it will be. Otherwise, it's very difficult. I mean, 
just like that. I mean, we may do it. We may, I mean, even if something is not connected to or something topical, we may still carry it if the argument is good, but uh, you will not get space in a general newspaper for that, you know, because it need to have, it needs to have a topicality. Yeah, so Garima Singh wants to know, how do we decide the appropriateness of media for a certain output? What are the factors to consider for choosing which mood media would best convey our message? Yeah. Okay. Broadly, I mean, if if it's if it's a uh, if 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 it is uh, something that you want to communicate, where where the voice is important. I mean, where where somebody is speaking, and then you know, uh, uh, and and it's just going to be speaking, speaking, speaking. So after some time, the person's face is irrelevant. So, I mean, if that if that is the kind of message that you want to do, I mean, a very important message, but you want to do it through the audio mode, then you can go for FM or you know, regular radio and then podcast because this is something. But if, if you're talking about something which, which has visual representation, a lot of scope for visual representation, go for, go for a medium that has... Uh, 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 you know, that's that's television or, you know, YouTube. I mean, YouTube is social, but then, you know, you can go for television and that kind of media. And if you, if if there is, I mean, if you want to just, just argue a case, you know, and make a strong argument, go for the classic uh, medium, like the print media. You know, print meaning today when I say print, I'm also meaning digital. It's not just digital text, you know, not just paper text, you know, just digital text. And because even all the paper text publications are now in digital text and they consume more in the digital text form than in paper text form. So uh, digital uh, in the text media. So that that's how uh, you would go in terms of the broad basis of what media to choose. Now, amongst this, which platform do you want to choose? That you have to do your due diligence. And that that's something you have to follow and see which is the plat which is a which is a, which is the platform which is most likely to give you a fair space and a fair treatment to what you're trying to say. So I mean, uh, if it's a if it's a very strong science and technology stories, you you know uh, the uh, Hindu has a reasonably strong CETA pages in the science engineering technology, so you can go go in for that. So, so that that you have to do your. I mean, you have to keep following the media. You have to uh, you have to read and and uh, and and decide where to go. Yeah. So, Gopi, I think uh, that's all we have for today. And many people have requested a recording of the session, saying that it's been a very nice webinar. Thank you. That's very kind. That's very kind of you. I mean, it's been a pleasure talking to all of you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And thank you to yeah. CEC for organizing this uh, meeting. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks. Thank you, Shiraka.